First of all, it's an honor for me to be here, to uh, not be here to give a speech, but to be here to represent Ron. And why am I here to represent Ron? Because, you know, Ulysses Williams, as Ron says, is a very humble and quiet, laid-back type individual. But I know Ulysses over the years has been very serious in, in terms of activism. Ulysses has always fought for the underdog. As long as I've known him, he's fought for the underdog. And then, at the same time, he called me up and he said, hey man, we got this school teacher down there. Now when he said school teacher, I was impressed. Why? Because I work in the, in the industry of education as well. And I write in, for kids, a lot of times I write in a book in terms of the key, the key to success is education. That's like food for life. Like if you don't eat that steak or greens or potatoes or what have you, after a while you're dead. If you don't get any education, that's food for life there. You don't get any education, you wish you was dead. <laughs> that's how bad life will be for you. So as Ron became evident in my mind and my heart in terms of him being an activist, you, know, you go back in time and you start thinking, what is an activist? And I had to reflect on my life, myself, is when I was a youngster. And the things that I saw, Look like you look out your window and you say, man, it's a crisp, clear day by the grace of God. But then when I look down from the sky, I see things that's broke. When I say broke, meaning that I see people living in their house where they can't pay their rent. And they look in their box and there wasn't no food in the box, just built up. Was that 20, 20 mule team borax, a little yellow box? Or you sit back and say, wow, how long can they pass these clothes down from one brother to the next? Or kids didn't have food in their house and had to go to school to try and get an education. I saw these things when I was very young. And at the same time while I saw them, I was scanning. And I'm scanning for the adults that's out there. How come I don't see the adults making a move for the things that I see? Because if I see them, you see them too. But I didn't see them then. And I looked high and I looked low. But then in a while, it got to the point where I couldn't look no more. It was time for action. I used to go to school and see kids that didn't have in their house what I had in mind. Because I was lucky. I had a mother and a father that was like the Rockets of Gibraltar. Who thick and thin, they stayed together. But I saw at the same time, the same thing that I'm fighting against here in this neighborhood, and we're fighting against neighborhoods all over the nation, a thing called dope. Whether it be heroin, or cocaine, or speed, Dope. And when the dope came to my neighborhood 50 years ago, they had mothers and fathers, they had kids, they had a commune, a family. They had love, they had understanding, they had wisdom, they had stories they passed down. And then all of a sudden, boom, I went to bed one night and woke up the next day and all that was gone. Because somebody turned their head when they brought the dope in. So all the families no more was not there because they started to disintegrate. They started to just fall off because fathers stopped coming home. They were missing in action. And here we are, like I say, 60 years later, and they're still missing in action. That's why we have so many kids in the street with drugs and running gang tag signs, killing one another, being used and misused and abused by the system. But just like I see that, Brian see that. Why does he see it? Because it was up close in his face because he saw it every day in school. And his attitude is the same as mine. I'm not trying to reach all of the people all the time. My mandate is to reach one of y'all. And there's still enough in you for you to raise up to go out and reach one someone else and come into the fold. Why is John Collins here amongst you with this man? Because 44 years ago I started a fight fight is yet to be won. I'm still in the fight. When I started, we had a small nucleus of people. Now we got a big wide span where a lot of people understand what I understood 44 years ago. The fight gonna get better. You guys here, right now, are the town criers. It's like if I'm instilling something in you right now about what I'm saying, 
is for you to formulate your process to go convey it to your peers and your friends and your neighbors and the people in your church and tell them to say, come out and let this man fight for us. All we have to do is energize him and let him know that we're behind you. We don't have to say a word, but just be there in numbers. We can turn the tide in this neighborhood, turn the tide in this city, and possibly set this nation on fire with a new paradigm and new growth. Ron is a great man. Job is going to be a politician today when they got so many people trying to set you up to pull you down. When you can't go out and get the right campaign money because all the campaign people that has the money are crooks. <coughs> and when it comes to you, come on, baby, we'll give you what you want. But then we want to keep depressing the people, subjugating the people to second standard lives. And then at the same time, while they're doing it, making you feel good about it because they're teasing you and believing and having you believe that this is the life you're supposed to have. Think outside the box. Look in the sky. The sky is wide open. The sky is not a little span. The sky is wide open. And it's wild and as wild as your dreams, as wide as your dreams are, reach for the sky. The man can take you there. He's a fighter. They can't buy him. They can't intimidate him. And the only way they can kill him is God allowed them to kill him. See, the people talk to me, oh man, you know when you step on the line, they can take your life. If God wants your life to go, you will go. The king didn't go until he finished his mission. They're still talking about him right now. They ain't talking about John Wayne no more. <laughs> right? <laughs> when you sit back and think about this, Ron, at one point or another, behind closed doors, you know what name they're going to give him? The same name they gave me. Troublemaker. Yeah. But then you know, when you see the word troublemaker and you hear it so long, then you begin to look at that word. Let me analyze this. Let me look at it. Let me check it out. And you look over and you say, wow, you know, it was a guy named Pancho Villa years ago. So he was like Malcolm X, he was fighting for his people. He said, but they didn't call him Pancho Villa behind clothes, they call him a troublemaker. Sit back and think about another guy, a little Indian guy with a little sheet wrapped across his body with little round glasses. When all the dust settled, they didn't call him Gandhi, they called him a troublemaker. Let's take off, let's go to South Africa and lay incarcerated man for 28 years. Because they called him a troublemaker. Peter Norman, <coughs> white fellow from Australia. The modern day John Brown. And all the dust settled, they didn't call him Peter Norman, they called him a troublemaker. Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, yours truly. And the greatest troublemaker <coughs> of all is Jesus Christ. So, you know, after a while, when Brown look at it, he's going to say, you know, I'm in pretty damn good company here today. We call it <laughs> so don't be worried about the title that they give you if you know in your heart and your spirit that you're fighting for the right issues. Don't let them deter you and make <coughs> you weak and tell you they're going to cut you down. Because I'm not strong on drugs. I haven't lost my mind. I don't look too undernourished. <laughs> I might have lost a little bit of my looks. <coughs> and then I'm here. I'm not broken. I'm still fighting for the cause. And I have seen us make progress. We got a long way to go. And the reason why we have still such a long way to go is because it's a slow process to wake us up as people. I realize it's life that we live for us adults. From the time I was 23 years old. I never looked at what I did in Mexico City for my life or for my kids' life and their peers and their kids. Those adults in this room, the life that you live is not for yourself, but it's for your kids' life. When you buy that house, you ain't buying the house to say, I bought this house for me to live in. What goes through your brain is I hope I can get it paid off so my kid can own it because that's the next step in life for you. So. Let's go for the gusto and realize that the picture that we paint right now, we paint for our future.
God bless you and thank you for giving me the